Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to be working on an A1466 MacBook Air that is not powering on. We're going to open this thing up, try to see if we can figure out what's wrong with it, and make it work again. Make it into a little, nice, happy little MacBook. See how many happy little MacBooks we have to make work again to pay off a back rent debt of $92,000. Okay. Say around five times ninety-two. Ugh. Yeah, that's gonna be something. Okay. All right. So let's figure out what's wrong with this MacBook. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on my power supply. My power supply is going to be what I plug my charger into. Now, when I know how much amperage the board is using by itself without the battery plugged in, I will have a better read on what this board is doing. It also helps if you turn the power supply on. The fan spins. The fuck? What the fucking troll? What? This already works. I bet that one has corrosion on its trackpad cable. The note said it could tell the power button was being pressed but wouldn't turn on, which typically means the trackpad is resetting the SMC when you hit the power button rather than shorting SMC on off elder ground. The shorting SMC reset elder ground as a result of corrosion on the trackpad of the trackpad connector, also known as the IPD flex cable. Let's take a quick look at that before we move on to the next machine. Just a hair. It's just a hair. Ooh, corrosion on pin two over here. You see that pin? Looks different than the other pins. Second pin on the right there. Or am I just seeing things? Yeah, it does look different. I would say trackpad. Let's see, what does the trackpad flex look like under there? Get that thing twisted around. Ooh, yeah, look at that, look at that. Burn mark, burn mark. See that? That's a burn mark on that little trackpad flex cable. So on this machine, when you're hitting the power button, what happens is the keyboard then communicates with the trackpad. And then the trackpad then routes that to the computer. So you have over here, on an A1466 MacBook Air. The keyboard plugs into the trackpad. The trackpad plugs into the machine. So most likely what happened on this machine is because there is absolutely no liquid resistance whatsoever, uh, there's large gaps in here, almost damn near the size of a, a Tesla Model 3, re between the trackpad and the chassis, liquid can come through here really easy. And if you open up a schematic in a board view for the 820-00165, which is what this is, let's just take a look at that cable and that pin. So we had corrosion around pins 2 and 3 on one of the sides. So on this side, pins 2 and 3 are trackpad SPI MISO, which is just going to be a data line for things, you know, like what key are you pressing on the keyboard, what direction are you moving the mouse, that shit's not going to matter. What really matters is on the other side. So you have SMC on off L, that's the power button, you have PP3V42, that's the power rail that powers it, and SMC Reset L, SMC LSOC Reset L. Now, the system management control, the SMC, is going to be the chip that is responsible for things like charging the battery, turning the computer on and off, detecting when you hit the power button, detecting when the battery's low, detecting sensors and seeing their temperature, and it's also responsible for charging. Now, the SMC sometimes needs to be reset. Further, the SMC is going to be in a reset state when you first plug the charger in, because the SMC is powered by PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. PP3V42 underscore G3 hot is the first rail that turns on and power everything in the machine, and that is also going to be responsible for your one-wire circuit, which tells you the charger green light to turn on, it's going to be responsible for the system management controller turning on. Now, the system management controller needs PP3V42 to be 3.42 volts in order to turn on. If the SMC tries to turn on before the 3.42 volt rail is stabilized, let's say it tries to turn on while PP3V42 is 5 volts, or 1 volt, 
or two volts, it will have a kind of a, like a brownout effect, which is it won't boot properly and it'll crash. It needs to only turn on when PP3V42, its incoming power rail, is exactly 3.42 volts. And there's a chipset in the machine that ensures that happens. It makes SMC reset L stay high until about a you know, real small amount of time has passed. And then once PP3V42 underscore G3 hot is stable, then it releases SMC reset L and allows the SMC to work, aka not be reset. The underscore L in SMC reset L means the signal is present when it's low, meaning the SMC is going to be reset when that signal is low. So it immediately brings that signal back high once PP3 or 2 underscore G3 ought to stabilize. Now, one of the things that I imagine may happen, it may not since I scraped at this a little bit, is that if I were to plug the trackpad in and I would hit the power button, that you may get some sort of funky behavior here where when you hit the power button, it doesn't turn on the machine, but the light on the charger changes colors. And this is a common thing to happen on the A1466 MacBook Air, where the charger light will be orange, like it is right now, the charger light is orange, and when you hit the power button, it turns green. Now, it just so happens on this machine that that corrosion was really, really small and barely noticeable, so I'm not able to reproduce that. But the reason that that'll happen is because if you take a look at the schematic in the board view over here, you'll notice that the SMC on-off, aka this is the thing where you're telling the computer to turn on or off, it detects you hitting the power button when it's low. That's what happens when you hit the power button, by the way. When you hit the power button on this particular model computer over here, when you hit power, what you're actually doing is you're shorting this signal to ground. You're shorting SMC on off L to ground, and when this is shorted to ground, it sends a message to the SMC to, uh, to tell that you hit the power button and turn the machine on or off. It thinks that what you're doing when you're hitting this button is actually hitting this button and resetting the SMC, which is why you will see the machine's light turn from green to orange. Now, you didn't see that behavior here, but that was the behavior that the customer was most likely experiencing, and that is why this machine was not working when they brought it in, but it is working on my desk. That little bit of corrosion was probably just in the right spot, and when I took the computer out of the slot, it moved in some way, shape, or form, but it most certainly will return. And the way that you fix this is by examining this little trackpad keyboard flex over here for any side of corrosion. And as I said, it's always going to be on one of those pins right over there around 18, 19, and 20. You examine it, and again, as you can see, the issue is right over there around pins 3 and 4. Look at that. See that? Corrosion is right there, exactly where I expected it to be. What you do is you replace this cable with another one. I believe you may be able to buy them on store.rossmangroup.com from time to time. And if you're feeling particularly nice to that customer, if you really, really just, you know, actually want to make sure that it doesn't come back in a month or two, unlike L2, what you'll do is you'll replace the trackpad as well for the customer because the trackpad, again, you know, you could touch that up. You really could. But you never know if any of the circuitry on the trackpad is messed up. And you just don't want the people to come back to the store again over a part that's this fucking cheap. So you might as well just replace it for them. Unfortunately, that makes a kind of boring video. It's not exactly an exciting stream. There's no soldering involved here. There's no uh, anything else. But you, you get an idea as to how you can read the problem description. Once you have enough experience working on the device over and over again, you can psychically detect what is wrong with the device. And it gets to be a lot of fun. It gets to be really rewarding to be able to solve these problems for your customers. And uh, it gets to be really rewarding when you actually kind of guess what's wrong with it and you're just correct before you even open the machine. Uh, that being said, we are going to move on to the next MacBook. We'll leave a note in this one to give the device an internal cleaning. We're going to leave a note to check for liquid damage because I imagine that some liquid was ingressed into that trackpad area where, again, there is a panel gap damn near the size of a Tesla Model 3's doors. And that we are going to... Uh, Move on to the next machine. So trackpad, trackpad cable replacement, internal cleaning, new machine. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. And if you're a little bit curious about the SMC Reset L signal or the brownout detection or any of that, just search this channel for SMC Reset L. SMC underscore Reset underscore L. It's explained fully in, on this channel in another video. Bye now.